This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. I'm here about iPhone OS 3.0. Developer preview of OS 4. iOS 7. So Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, usually called WWDC, takes place generally in June every year. And it's been, at least for the most part, where we've seen Apple debut the newest version of iOS. Now there's been some hardware announcements there as well, but traditionally it's been a software focused event because it's for developers. This year though, there will not be the thousands that gather typically for these events. It is going to be online only due to you know, the current pandemic going on right now. It doesn't appear to slow down Apple's new product momentum. We'll certainly see the new versions of iOS and iPad OS, but we should also see hardware finally make its debut this year. All right, so let's start with the juicy stuff, uh, new iMacs. The current iMac design has been around for almost 10 years. It's a long time for design language to stick around. And Sonny Dixon has dropped the leak mic saying the new iMac will take a design language cues from the current generation iPad Pro and have crazy thin bezels, almost all screen. We should also see big upgrades to the graphics side, taking advantage of AMD's current Navi family. You can say goodbye to the Fusion Drive, that combination of a small storage SSD plus a traditional spinny hard drive, going straight up SSD now, now that those costs have gone down. So I'm pretty pumped to see what Apple does. I've always liked the iMac, but it's been a purchase I've held off on recently because the design language looks so old and the process and the graphics haven't caught up to a lot of the PC counterparts yet. That's not gonna be the only hardware that we should see at WWDC. Other ones, we've talked to this one at length, but AirTags, Apple's tile competitor for tracking all of your things. Apple's hit a home run with AirPods and AirPods Pro, and they're gonna be introducing a third AirPod line over the year headphones, allegedly called AirPod Studio. And Apple doing over the year headphones is nothing new. They've been doing it with Beats for a few years, but this should separate itself from Beats for a few reasons. First, no left or right ear cups. Whatever way you put it on, the headphones will know and orient themselves accordingly. You'll have active noise canceling on here as well. And supposedly the ear cups themselves are removable and will fasten on with magnets. Apple loves to do magical stuff with magnets. You could put on different ear cups for listening to music, different ear cups for editing, different ear cups for working out. Um, they'll just snap right on. And you should also get really high quality audio fidelity and of course, the easy pairing that you get with all of Apple's AirPod line. Going along with music is the HomePod. I think one of the biggest knocks to the HomePod, aside from not having a screen and relying on Siri, is that it was really expensive. When you consider how low cost Google and Amazon are offering their home speakers, the HomePod, despite sounding amazing, is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. So we should see not only a new redesigned cheaper HomePod, but also a HomePod mini to compete with those $100, $150 entry level competitors that you've got from others. And finally, new Apple TV hardware. And if you're thinking to yourself, John, please say the words new remote. I'm sorry. Don't expect too much here. Really, it's the same design, except with the A12X processor, which is super disappointing because Apple does not update their Apple TV hardware nearly at all. And presumably the processor update is just for things like Apple Arcade. No new remotes, supposedly no support for 8K either. So when Apple made the switch from PowerPC to Intel, Steve Jobs said that their Macs have been living a secret double life. And it appears that they've actually been living a secret triple life uh, as Apple is geared to finally lay out the plan to transition from the Intel processors to ARM based. And that is a gigantic deal. Now first don't expect ARM based Macs anytime in 2020. They'll show developers what they can expect, how they can get third-party apps ready, whether or not they'll be emulated or how that's going to work. But think about the raw power that you get from an iPad Pro when you run those benchmarks, you see how fast it is. And it doesn't make sense that something that small can at least benchmark faster than crazy powerful Intel processors. So imagine those iPad speeds, but just juiced up more for laptops for desktop computers. There's a lot of power Apple could take advantage of and with them potentially vertically integrating everything, making the processor now here as well, we should get really, really powerful, less power hungry computers that should in theory 
to make the whole laptop and desktop world really happy. And potentially a cool side effect of this ARM transition is that in theory, all these Apple first party apps, so things like Final Cut should work on the iPad Pro line, bringing sort of that fusion of iPad and Mac OS one step closer to reality. But this ARM transition, while sounding awesome on paper, is a really tough transition. We saw kind of the stumbles that Microsoft had with their Surface Pro X. It's tricky and the ideas are good and the fundamentals are good, but a lot of how it gets executed is out of Apple's hands. Whether or not developers take advantage and port their apps over, how that's going to work, it's a lot of pressure uh, on Apple, but if they can pull it off, I think they'll have a winner on their hands. So I've been talking about Clean My Mac X for a long time, but the one knock on it was it wasn't available from the Mac App Store, directly from Apple, signed by Apple. That though is no longer the case, and I'm happy to announce that Clean My Mac X is now widely available from the Apple App Store. If you don't know what Clean My Mac X is, it gives you full control over your files and apps on your Mac, it scans your storage, reveals tons of hidden junk that can be safely removed, saving you a ton of really valuable hard drive space. Probably one of my favorite features of Clean My Mac X is using it to delete apps. Not only deletes the app itself, but all the files that are associated with that app. And of course, Clean My Mac doesn't touch essential system files at all. It can also scan your Mac for malware, including adware, spyware, Trojans, and a bunch of other nasties that can steal your data. Now I've talked a decent amount about saving free space, but there's a separate feature just for that. Uh, it's called Space Lens. It lets you find out sort of the heaviest folders on your Mac, and you can browse your storage pretty conveniently. So Clean My Mac X does the job of like 13 different apps. It keeps your Mac secure from malware and adware. It can free up hard drive space. It can help you delete apps, all the files associated with it. If this sounds like something that you want to check out, and I think you should, we'll include a link down below where you can download it now from the Mac App Store. So while all the hardware sounds awesome, WWDC is known for software, and we will see the debut of iOS 14. Now, bear in mind, traditionally, we don't see the full breadth of what the new version of iOS is going to be until the new iPhones tend to come out, but we should see a lot of cool stuff show itself for the first time with iOS 14. So a lot of new changes coming for iOS 14, chief among them, a new list view for your apps. So think about what you get with the Apple Watch and what we had with Windows Phone. And finally, 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 and an extra finally for emphasis, how about them sweet, sweet home screen widgets making their way to iOS 14? I know there's another OS that's had those for a while, but uh, nice to see them make their way to Apple. Another one that's really been wanting for a while, third-party apps as default. So think changing your mail app, Chrome instead of Safari, Spotify instead of Apple Music, other smaller things, redesign wallpaper settings, be able to download wallpaper packs and set it, and it'll adjust itself dynamically. You also see a new dedicated app just for AR. And I think one of the coolest, but probably not so useful at launch, we should see Car Key make its debut in iOS 14. So using your phone as a key, and allegedly BMW is one of the first launch partners at this, but if you've been admiring maybe what Tesla or Volvo are doing with their phone as key, the iOS 14 app should enable that for a lot of cars moving forward. And I think that might potentially be a really big deal. If people get used to using their phone as a key, if you don't have that feature on Android, that's probably a huge reason why people would stick with their iPhones. A smaller, but perhaps potentially significant thing is OS recovery and diagnostics over the air. It's a step closer to the portless iPhone. So if Apple has to diagnose something going on with your phone, they won't have to plug in a lightning cable anymore. It could all be done OTA. So in addition to iOS 14, we should see iPadOS 14 make its debut and it'll have all the same stuff that we just got with the newest version of iOS, plus a few extra. So a big one, pencil support for handwriting recognition in all text fields. So anywhere there's text, you can just write. That should be super nice to have. A dedicated app for Xcode, I know developers will be pretty excited for that. And that should also lend itself to potentially pro apps making their way to the iPad, things like Final Cut Pro 10 potentially could show themselves at this WWDC. So other things we expect to make their debut at WWDC, the newest version of Mac OS, TV OS, and not to be forgotten, watch OS. 
So that's my hopeful but realistic expectations for WWDC. And obviously all this is totally subject to change. Apple at the 11th hour could decide to cancel any or all of this, but it appears that as of this filming, we should see a lot of amazing hardware and software make their debut for the world. I cannot wait to see iOS 14 home screen widgets, something that I've been really excited about. We've seen what the jailbreak community can do with that. And I hope that Apple takes inspiration for what those amazing developers have been doing.